you'll find that a lawful permanent resident is foreign to the United States and is basically a diplomatic person that is not under their jurisdiction. If you go to Title VIII, Section 316.5, I think it's uh, two or something. It's in there somewhere. But uh, I can read it here. It's, I don't think it's a silver bullet, but it, it just, if you think about it, um, claim of non-resident alien status for income, purpose, for income tax purpose after lawful admission as a permanent resident. An applicant who is a lawfully admitted permanent resident in the United States but who voluntarily claims non-resident alien status to qualify for special exemptions from income tax liability or fails to file either federal or state income tax returns because he or she considers him, him, himself or herself <coughs> to be attacked to be a non-resident alien raises a rebuttable presumption that the applicant has relinquished the privilege of permanent resident status in the United States. That's their law. Yeah, I think this, yeah, is, um, this is a very it's important very point. Important point. We, we, we do cover it within the canons when we spoke at the end about defining the role of both the enemy of the state and alienation. But what we haven't done is we haven't brought that up into some kind of practical remedy for folks in the States, Canada, and the rest of the world, Australia, the rest of the world. So I think this is a, a, an excellent point, that written in the statute, they are making it clear, once you know the words, that if you follow a certain procedure in their rules, they will uh, agree or acknowledge, I should say, that you are outside of the and that they will treat you as such. Exactly. And I've lived by that as far as... Uh, dealing with the courts where when I get something from the court I'll say return to sender notify sender of new address which is care of my current address and if you go to the application form to become a lawful permanent resident the federal government on there it says your address is care of which is outside of their jurisdiction so if you ever get something in the mail and maybe it's from the courts or whoever, and you don't want it because that's in their jurisdiction, send it back to them saying, uh, send it to the care of address outside of your jurisdiction, and then I'll take a look at it. But, yeah, I uh, think these are good, good, good points. Good points. Look, I'm look, going to keep I'm going. going, going. I, really I really appreciate you raising, you raising this. Raising this. this. And I think, I think we, we, we need we, to be clear up for, for all members that they can go, they through, can go through and they can find, for example, systematic answer to how to deal with uh, correspondence, a systematic answer to procedures of identity in terms of passport, citizenship, and I hope that over the coming weeks as we build the communities, we can make that clear. Okay? Okay, thank you. I just wanted to give that to your listeners. Maybe they can do something with it if they're going to court, if they say, go before the judge, and, and uh, the judge says, how do you plead? And, and the person could say, well... Judge, I'm a lawful permanent resident under uh, Title 8, Section 316.5. You have no jurisdiction over me, so uh, I'll see you later. No, somebody very, very to, good. If somebody wants to try Thanks, that. Man. Thank you. Okay. We just had a, a bit of an echo there, so look, with calls coming in, um, just check out your streaming too when we're speaking so we don't get that uh, that feedback coming through. Thanks for people letting us know. Well, thanks also for that. I, I, I think I, I've said this several times. Let me say it now. I am honoured by the knowledge that you all possess, and this as being a model should be seen as such, and really what I want to encourage is that the workbenches and tools become more and more available where you can contribute to this rather than being seen as a funnel that all has to come through here. That's not the intent. So some of this information is long-standing, some of it is new, some of it, I know that many of you would find it very useful to have it there now, but this is why I'm spending more and more time on the workbenches 
and not just on the documents because with the tools you can add and update so much of this information yourself. Okay, I'm going to get to Alpha 999 and I'll come back to that question which was incomplete for Galactic Sojourner. So I want to come back to that uh, after we speak to Alpha 999. Uh, Alpha 999, can you hear us? Yeah, I can. How are you doing, Frank? Very well. Um, I, my question is this. I had a question. Uh, I, I was just wondering how you would answer this question about the birth certificate or settlement certificate um, being the creation of a legal fiction and how they do it in their system. How would you um, explain that to someone who asks you the, the creation of a legal fiction? How, how does that work as far as you know? Well, there's two parts. There's the, the concept of a legal fiction, and then there's the actual example of a, of a birth certificate, settlement certificate. Would you agree that they've come two parts, two, two points? So yes. let's start with, with, the, with the legal fiction. If, if you pull out a driver's license, for example, let's say you've got a driver's license, so you pull out a driver's license and you show that and say to someone, you say, um, this is the driver's license. And, and here I am. And you can see on that there's my photo. So it, it, it looks like me, yeah? Mm -hmm. But no, no one would look at that piece of plastic and me standing next to it holding it and say they're, they're, they're the same thing. They're not. They're different, aren't they? Mm -hmm. So the, the legal fiction is created by that driver's license. It's created because I exist behind the scenes, yeah? Mm -hmm but it is separate. So another example is to say, people call me Frank, but I don't have Frank tattooed on me. I wasn't born with Frank tattooed on me or you know, made in Australia <laughs> on my body. I mean, that, that's the, 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 the label you identify and communicate to me is an attribute, but that attribute is a, is a fiction. It is not part of the real world. Does that make it clear? I think that answers, you know, and, and just on, on, on top of that, how would you explain how they go about and start trading as that is a, a stock on uh, securities and so forth, create securities with that legal well, fiction? Well, I, I would suggest that they go and read. And I, I, tell, you, I tell you difficulty, I'm, I'm more than happy to answer when people have an objection or, or a difference or, a, or a, an opinion. I tell you the hardest thing that I've ever found is when people want to debate, argue, and they actually haven't done any reading. Yeah. You see, yeah, sure. how can yeah. you explain to someone the whole nature of bonds? They hear the word bond, treasury yeah. bond. They have no idea where the word bond comes from. They have no idea what is being bonded. I mean, how do you, how do you deal with someone that until they read the background are in yeah. complete ignorance. I don't think you can, I don't think you can uh, share, in fact, it's almost a, 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 an absurdity to think that you can open someone's mind if the mind isn't willing to be open. Exactly, okay. I had that uh, question posed to me and I had a hard time, you know, like following through and explaining it. And uh, um, that, that, that was my question. And uh, I do have another one, but I'll get back in line. Okay. All right. Thank, Thanks, Alpha Nine Nine Nine. Good on you. Thank, thank, thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. No, just, uh... Yeah, I know it's a difficult one for, for many when they someone says, well, "What is this thing, UK? There? What are you talking about?" Or, or they ask a question, and I, I fall into this trap sometimes. I'll get into restating history, and, and I think, "Well, hold on a second. If, if an answer like that relates to some necessary reading, then suggest to someone to do the necessary reading. If you let people and respect people that it's their journey, you can't force people to read, you can't force anything on someone. If they don't go and read, well, that's their point. But once they've read, then absolutely answer, debate, argue, whatever point they raise. I want to, I want to answer this comment. It's more a comment, actually, Galactic Sojourner. And then we'll get into a couple of other questions on the 
on the uh, chat and then we'll go to the next caller. Uh, so Galactic Surgeon just makes this, I guess, this observation. Um, as your KDF system, we have treaties in place with the higher dimension authorities for the direct intervention on behalf to clean up the mentally insane rulers. Yes, yes, we, we do have that position. In fact, part of the importance of doing things right, and it is a challenge that I'm faced every day, is we have problems. I have the problem of survival. I have the problem that I need to earn money to eat. You all have the same challenges. You have also the extra challenges that may be happening in your life that bring you to here now. But those challenges aren't necessarily new to our generation. They've been around for a long time. And it is important that what we do is that we take care to the foundation. We don't just run in and turn things on and say, there you go, and now we are replicating the Roman system by placing form over substance. Our substance is our foundation, and in particular with the societies, the cross treaties, the 33 codes of law, the 22 books of canon law, these things need to be finished as much as we need the workbenches. Um, quick question, and then I'll go back to the callers. Uh, Guest 7 asked the question, uh, can you update the position regarding will and testament perfected template process, please? Yes, thanks, Guest 7, and I didn't answer this, and I hope, I'm sorry I missed this. But the question is, uh, with will and testament, uh, there's been a substantial amount of research that continues that is not yet ready in notes form and in template form. And the particular focus on will and testament is understanding, wrong word, comprehending the evolution of uh, the system of will and testament, the statutes, the holes, and really the, the broader and deeper function that's at play. Now, I'll give, give an example where we, we don't want to simply slip into writing a template and miss the, the point. If you go and have a look on the court sites now, you'll see that some pages, albeit few of them have words, but most are not ready yet, but there are some pages up there now in preparation for the section on Will and Testament. I refer you to uh, the page in terms of, um, uh, where is it, history. On Go to Will and Testament and have a look at history. And the reason I ask you to go have a look at that is that it actually has got some quite good background on the tradition of and custom of vocal will, the concept of the ancient Greek uh, uh, diathechy, uh, the Roman concept of testamentum, which preceded the concept of a written will and testament. It turns out that if you think about the... Um, the Roman system, and gee, they're tricky, that a will and testament is executed uh, well before you die. So as a deed, it has been perfected, but it's not considered a will in their system until it is read. In other words, until it is vocalised. So in effect, what they're doing is they're tricking us into believing that the form has now supplanted the substance because the substance on will and testament was always your vocalization. So just give us a little bit more time this week to get this right so that we don't fall into any rush to uh, procedure and miss the obvious. Because at this stage, it appears the obvious is that your will, your intent, has always been what you express it to be. If I say, it is my will and intent that I have expressed my will and intent, and that appears to be still the same basic principle honoured, albeit with a whole lot of tricky ritual and form put on top. Okay, let me go to the next caller, and then we'll come back to the questions. I'm going to unmute North, North and West Colorado. Hello, North and West Colorado. Can you hear us? Hi, um, yeah, I, I wanted to pursue this a little bit in terms of, um, now I have a birth certificate that 
has no footprints. It's an upper and lower case.